So interesting how they use, is this supposed to be? Hang on, half and half, what? Is it my screen? Okay, good. Right. Sorry, that is, a, that is an early pause, I do apologize. But what I was gonna say was, it's so interesting how these toothbrush scenes have gone to show the state of their relationship. I'm just thinking back to, you know, when it's been fun and, you know, they've been joking around, right? I, I remember it because I made a joke about it, like, because it, you know, it triggered my germophobia of like, please do not put her toothbrush in your mouth. It's been consistent, you know, where they've been in this room. And it, it, like I say, it's been very representative of where they're at and how their relationship is doing. And so sorry, it's so interesting that we're immediately, I've not seen how it's playing. I can kind of see where it's going though, right? Because this, uh, the divide, because that's what it is, it's a divide. I think coming into what I was talking about last episode and how I see this, for lack of a better word, a divide, is coming into their relationship subtly. And I don't think they quite are aware of it. Like I say, I think last episode, they were on the cusp of a, an argument. They're, they're slowly drifting apart and, and not really aware of it. So yeah, and I think immediately this is, is representative of that. And actually it's interesting how it seems like here, they've got different color grades. Like one looks, this one looks looks vibrant, like more vibrant, like the color is a little richer. This looks a little bit muted. And this looks like it's from Kim's perspective. This from, from Jimmy's, right? Oh no, wait, this is a different day. Yeah, no playful, no jokes, no laughing, just getting the job done, getting in, getting out. That's sad, this is sad. And this is the thing, it's still there a little bit, cause what was it? Hang on, we got, we had here. Yeah, Kim puts out her toothbrush and Jimmy does it for her. Do you know what I mean? There is still that closeness there, right? And I think that's a little bit of a nod to that, that it's not it's not dead. Their relationship's not gone or finished. That kinship and that love is still there. It's just some of the shine has gone. Sad, it's really sad to see. Ah, divide still maintaining it, these two lives. The fallout from last episode and what happened there in the way that the decision that the Kim made, very rightfully so, very validly so that she made, the way that it sent Jimmy and the way that, like I say, here we go. Yeah, very representative. Kimberly Wexler, law office, that's where she's going. Sword is where he's going. And this divide representing that gap widening. Yeah, very real, very, very almost quick from last episode. Paths forward for each of them that are taking them further away from each other, yeah. Just naturally. That horse, man. <laughs> mm. Even when they're together, there's a divide look. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and that it's still kind of there. Right, and we're slowly getting to a place where the gap's wider and wider. It's really uh, lovely and, and horrible to watch how they're portraying that, that widening gap here. Well, yeah, and Kim on her own. Like, obviously, Jimmy doesn't have to be there for that, the cast coming off, but you gotta feel like he, he would have been in the past, right? Oh, Kim. Stress ball, stressed, yeah. I mean, she's doing everything without... Look, and this is great for Kim. This is what she wanted, She's, absolutely. But I don't think she wanted it at the expense of her relationship necessarily with Jimmy, right? She wanted both. And it, you know, it goes back to that line last episode of like, you want your cake and you want to eat it too. It's like, yeah, right? I don't think she wanted to lose, lose Jimmy for that. It's sad that she is. They're not really together anymore, are they? They're just going through the motions. They live together, but... And again, I'll say the same as last episode. They're due a, an argument, a conversation, because all of this is going to come to a head at some point. And I think that argument is going to either split them or bring them closer together again. And considering I, I know where, you know, Jimmy ends up, I got to imagine at the moment that it's probably just going to split them up. I, I, earlier than I thought, if we get it this episode or this season, right? This is sad. Uh, uh, he's on his own. It's almost like the drifting in and out of Kim, like the fading of Kim, right? The way that it was represented, because it's going back to how that scene started and she faded in, right? It, and it started with one half of the screen black. I think Kim's side faded in. It's still there, not quite fully. And then by the end of it, she's faded back out again and he's on his own. She's kind of, she's not quite in his life anymore, not really. Fading in and out. Hello and welcome to another Better Call Saul Sunday. Today is episode seven of season four. It's called Something Stupid. And who's it gonna be? We shall. See. Flamingo! Let's go. I'm gonna go out on a limb, you know, and I'm gonna say they end up splitting up by the end of this season. With a cozy waiting area. 
Right, he's looking for a new office. This is the thing. He's moving ahead very fast into, okay, that reality that we saw beginning of last episode of 10 months time, they end up back in the law office, him and Kim, gone, right? As of last episode, he didn't have that anymore. And now it's like, right, I've got to keep moving forward. I keep, I've got to keep going. I've got to get something to replace that. Because otherwise, like I said, we saw last episode, I think everything crashing down on him. Okay, that's gone. Let's get a new one. Let's get something else. Let's plaster over it with something else. I've, I've got to find that. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's a man sinking. Maybe an assortment of tea. Coffee. Buddy. Not just tea, eh? Now there's a bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. We're gonna get that cleaned out. Wow. Three, four, five, six, pretty big. Well, I think you'll find six is pretty average, mate. What do you think? Hmm. So no more cell phones? Not quite Kim, is he? Bless him, we love him, but... If you were a lawyer, this would be a great place, right? Right, he's selling it to him. Yeah, working himself up to give Kim that spiel, right? Nope. <coughs> big glass high rise. <laughs> yeah, when I'm not on my boat. Dream big. Ese es verde? Oh, come on, we gotta get this man a bell. Of course, Doctor. What? Uh oh, don't get too close. I feel like we've got a pervy Hector on our hands, mate. Don't do it, sir. Don't do it. Okay. I see. Well, you know, he's finding his joy wherever he needs to, right? Anyone in particular you want me to talk to or not talk to? Because this is the problem. What we saw at the beginning of last episode as well is that he is tying the lawyer thing to Kim, right? We saw in that flashback, I think a lot of his motivation came from wanting to impress Kim and find connection with Kim, right? And admiration in her eyes. I think we saw that last episode. And I think, again, he's tying here, like, there's obviously, there's a gap in their relationship, this distance in their relationship. I don't think he at least is is ignorant of it at this point. I think we saw that in the at the beginning and how it ended, his, his kind of almost, he was on his own, right? It, it faded to black on Kim's side. And there was a little moment where he lingered on his face where he kind of was almost looking and, do you know what I mean? It, I, and also, you know, he's, he's looking across, she's not there, right? When he's at home eating and yeah, I, I, he's not ignorant of it. I think he wants to close that gap, but this is the problem. The way that I think he's, he's, his brain has gone and trying to do it, we just saw he's getting this office space and it's like right this is the office space I'm gonna try and sell it to her and make this happen again as much as she's gone to Schweiger and Coakley that's his goal and he wants to do you know what I mean and that's that I think in his mind he's gonna bring them closer and it's like no mate you don't have to attach your romantic relationship to this thing of professional admiration but I think he is right he's got he, he's tying Kim and his closeness with her to that it depends on that and it's like that's really I think foundationally unhealthy for a, a relationship and I, and I don't think from Kim's side that's what she requires. I think she just wants him to be there as, as any partner would be. And I, and I think, so I see him trying to push this on her and maybe she's going to get angry of like, you didn't hear me. I'm at Schweikert and Coakley. This is good for me. I don't think you appreciate why I wanted to do that. And because what that does is demonstrates to Kim that he wasn't really listening to her last episode in the restaurant when she was talking about it, right? And, and you know, look, they're not really peeling back the layers of that conversation either, right? They've not really peeled back the layers, gone deep emotionally into where she's at and where he's at as well so there's more to be talked about there but i just think him doing that is completely the wrong thing to do i don't think she's going to appreciate it it's not going to work and i think like i say he's tying their intimacy to that which is the wrong way to go about it anyone in particular you want me to talk to Ooh, a work do talk to anyone really just just have fun mm. <laughs> don't worry they're gonna love you right is this schweiker and coakley folks then yeah hi, <laughs> hey, this is Jimmy Mc yeah this is going to be interesting considering what we saw at the beginning of last episode and how how he reacts in a law office in the way that like like everything that I've been talking about and this admiration that I feel like he needs of, of not feeling like the the stupid one and I think this is this is the interesting thing because it ties into what I was just saying he asked her is there anyone you want me to talk to is there anything I should say blah 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 and she's like just have fun just talk and that's what I mean that's all she needs from him is for Jimmy to just be a person a partner to her it's not tied to this professionalism the, this professional thing but like I say from Jimmy's perspective it is and I think him getting the office that we just saw in the previous scene demonstrates that and also is demonstrated in the question he asked her of like what should I say how should I act what should I do he's thinking about it from that perspective because that's where his kind of brain is rooted in their relationship in trying to be a good partner for her whereas from Kim's side it's like don't worry about that just just relax and be yourself do you know what I mean it dem 
it's demonstrating where they're both at in their relationship and what and how they see their relationship and i think truthfully i think kim's coming at it from a healthy perspective which is to be expected as well right she i think everything we've seen of jimmy he's very traumatized right um he's just lost his brother that was not a healthy relationship that that went very sour you know we've obviously seen that he's not in the best mental mindset i say right now but just just in general just because of his his life and how it's gone especially in the recent years but yeah i mean look where we're 10 minutes in and we've had kind of example 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 of the dissonance in this relationship and how it's not working and i think it's only going to get worse based on how jimmy sees it i mean, gotta say i'm obsessed with your tie beautiful yes keep it casual mate jimmy this is uh gary and stuff they, they work on my severity with me. Beautiful. Oh, here it is. This is for us, Debbie. Interesting, isn't it? I'm so sorry. It's been a pausey episode so far, but it's interesting how in this dynamic, because this is what I think is going to rub Jimmy up the wrong way eventually, is that she is the powerful one professionally, right? The normative thing in regards to gender would be the man, you know, in the suit, professionally impressive, the wife or the girlfriend on his arm, just there to look pretty and, and schmooze pe with people, right? That is that is genuinely what we tend to see in media. A lot of the time in, in society, that is how that relationship is seen to be the norm. And here we're getting it reversed. And again, it's, it's this example of Jimmy just needs to be okay with that. But I just think that Jimmy's not the kind of person that would be, especially from what we've seen and, and what's driving him motivating him especially like i say in their relationship and i just think he's not the professionally powerful one in this relationship anymore you know when they were both lawyers you could argue they were a, a, an even keel which, but you know I've, I've drawn attention to the fact that you know when they were in the office together when they were kind of working you know in the same space he did feel a little bit inferior if he wasn't putting in the same amount of work that she was and he had to kind of keep meeting her doing the same amount of work staying in the office until she leaves right and if she outpaced him there was some kind of tell that demonstrated that he wasn't okay with that dynamic and yeah i have a sneaking suspicion this is gonna rub him the wrong way and something's gonna come. we'll see we'll see i just don't think jimmy is the kind of man that would be okay and secure in himself in the dynamics of this relationship unfortunately because there's nothing wrong with this and as much as people put value on their professional lives that doesn't actually represent your value as an individual person i think i think societally we have this really unhealthy habit of doing that of ranking people higher in our minds based on their their job or their work because what that does and what what i find toxic about that and unhealthy about that is that it's, it's not it's not arranging people you know higher because of what they do but what that automatically does and what some people don't realize is that that does naturally arrange people lower which i think is the unhealthy aspect to that because what that does is devalue people based on what they do and, and you know we don't know why people do things quite a lot of the time people don't necessarily do things based on their capability they do things because it's like well i enjoy that more don't doesn't mean they couldn't do another job if they'd gone that path, right? We, we, you don't know that either. But I just think when you get into that kind of conversation, you do start to look down on people. And obviously that's not everyone. Not, not everyone does that. You know, nothing I'm saying encompasses everybody. But unfortunately, like, you know, this is an example of that kind of thing and that kind of thinking harming someone like Jimmy. And I think comes back to this thing of gender. I think men in our world, if they're not successful financially, if they're not powerful professionally, Again, this doesn't encompass all men and, and, you know, a lot of men can can get past this kind of insecurity and, and, and grow as people. But I do think socially a lot of worth in men is, is tied to the figure that they make and the job that they have. Equally as unhealthy, I think, you know, again, com coming back to this gender normative idea of uh, gender roles, I think for women, a lot of, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is just from, you know, the folks that I've spoken to and friends that I've had, a lot of worth for women growing up up is tied to their appearance and how they look what they dress in none of those gender stereotypes none of those gender norms are healthy but that tends to be how it is and i think i think we're seeing some of that exhibit itself in jimmy and the way that he behaves and demonstrates how that kind of upbringing that kind of societal perspective can warp you mentally into a place where I, I feel like he's going to tank a relationship that is genuinely good for him because of it, because I don't think he can handle it. All of these things that I'm saying, I say because I do feel like they're harmful in the long run and in these subtle ways influence their lives, right? And I think this is demonstrated by Jimmy's portrayal in the show, his relationship with Kim, and perhaps maybe where we're going to go in this episode and how perhaps we're going to get a little bit of friction between them. And you know what, two for Lewis, because he skipped lunch. This is all he needs, though. All he needs is to be himself, and people love him for that. One, two, <laughs> four.
There's no need to compare, my man. Oh, that's sweet. I think he's going to see that this is good for her, as hard as it is for him. And I do wonder whether actually there won't be an argument. It won't be a big roar. It'll just be a little bit of a whimper, you know, and he'll just kind of distance himself and let the relationship fail. Oh, he drinking. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my boy. There we go. Let's go talk to him. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. Oh, we're just talking about company retreats. Where are we going? <laughs> Sorry, pal. <laughs> Employees only. No. I'm thinking of splurging a little this year. Work gets out, you're a cheapskate. <laughs> I still think that Taos is number one. Note the, the subject of the conversation, money, prestige, splashing out. You know, it's it's the conversation of the rich, the wealthy, the, the powerful socially, because you can afford to go to, to these places for a company retreat. The world and the thing that I think Jimmy, to a certain extent, covets. I don't think this is the this is this is the problem is that I don't think he truly wants that I talked about last episode about how it wasn't about the money and I do believe that I think truly what Jimmy wants is to be happy but he has this and you know I talk about obviously the gender thing I, I, I do think the way that his relationship with his brother has influenced him as well comes into it where Chuck was in life how he behaved how he treated Jimmy what that earned Jimmy from his his brother right because of Jimmy's place in life I don't think he liked that I don't think he liked being treated that way by his brother and I think he it's completely valid you know it's human for those feelings to get the better of him and, and him to want to reach for higher because of these things right but but this is what I'm getting at is that I don't think it's truly what he wants right and, and Jimmy needs to get a hold of these feelings and, and deal with them process them because I think like I say this is gonna twist itself in him and come out of him in a, in a manner that is unhealthy feel free to jump in <laughs> we're just spitballing here I don't <laughs> I mean I'll just tell you right. Where are we going? It's kind of a long drive, isn't it? Part of the fun. Rent one of those uh, party buses. And parkas. I'm talking custom parkas. I see all of you out there cutting the powder and you're matching Schweikert and Coakley. Kim. Gonna make an impression. She sees, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the the expression on her face there. She, uh, he's, because he's riffing. He's going off on it. He's kind of reaching a little bit. He's carrying on with this, you know, because because he's trying. I think he struggled a little bit there to, to come up with somewhere, and it's like he realised that. Rich there was like, that's a bit far. Rejection, right? Subtly, and I don't think he Rich meant it that way, right? But I think that's how jo Jimmy took it, and he was like, fine, right? Okay. I think the internal workings of Jimmy there was like, okay, okay, no, I can make this work. I wasn't being stupid there. I wasn't stupid to suggest that. Let me explain why, right? And I think that's why he kept he, he went harder he went deeper you know he committed to this idea and it's like now he's going further with that it's like parkers custom parkers blah 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 you know he's selling again and you can see in kim's face she's like what are you doing Matching she's looking at rich as well yeah parkers. there it is i have a feeling she's gonna be like what was that about like later but again i think it comes into this inferiority complex that that jimmy's got and how i think rich and this conversation triggered it you know what aspen Hey, that's where you- Oh, mate, you should move on from this conversation. Talk about client development. It's a billionaire's playground. Jimmy, Aspen is like a nine hour- <laughs> It is a long time to be sitting on a bus. Yes, it is. Said I hear? No, stop. <laughs> I'm a private charter jet. Now he's rubbing it in their faces, isn't he? He's like, oh, you got all this money, splash out, private charter jet, like you got everything, come on, like, do you know what I mean? He's, he's rubbing it in their faces in a way that I think he's gonna press too hard. And I think Rich is cottoning on to what he's doing there as well. Jimmy's going a little bit distasteful with it. That's, that's not quite polite society conversation because he's ma he's making fun of them. And I think Rich, Rich is detecting that a little bit. Look at his face, look at Rich's face throughout all this scene. I'm transporting 56 distinguished yeah, look at his face, man. Here we come. <laughs> come on, Red. Yeah. Well, that was something. <laughs> yep. What did I say? She's gonna be like, what happened? What was going on? Oh, you don't want to talk about it. Damn. It's really gonna be this this professional hierarchical thing that I think is gonna tank their relationship, innit? That is a tight fit, dude. Damn. That is tight. Hey, behave yourself. <laughs> man, full respect to these drivers that are just getting, just sliding that right in, man. Wow, so they've been working. Okay. He's made modest improvements in his attack sale. Oh, hello. We're friends. We're having a dinner together. Oh, I love it, man. You know the question that I will ask. Is it him? That's almost a philosophical question. Mm. He's making incremental improvements almost every day. Look how he's, like, fingering the knife here. 
Oh, did she catch the water thing and him looking at her? Or his vital signs have. Uh, do you think Gus is going to clock what he did there with uh, looking at the nurse? Focus on hand mobility. Yeah, he's still watching. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You've done that before. He's going to clock it, I think. I think he's going to like that because that's kind of a sign that it is. There's some Hector in there, right? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, as this scene was starting, and I should have said it, I should have said it, it's my bad. I was like, I can see this scene ending with like him watching that, and then we end on like Gus's face subtly smiling or something. I Sorry, it's just funny. I knew. <laughs> Do you think that was purposeful? Oh yeah, buddy. He's in there. Oh, he's a happy boy. You've done magnificent work. She has, well done, mate. I understand that construction on... Your clinic is nearly complete. Ah, doing a favor. We'll be able to care for so many patients who would have been tossed aside. Beautiful. Oh. It is time to delegate Mr. Salamanca's care. Yeah, he's got what he wanted. Hector's progress is very promising. With sustained ah. care, he may eventually learn how to talk. Really? And even walk again. And Gus doesn't want that. We saw last episode him talking to Hector and what is it, the Kwati that he kept and what was it it, it broke a limb and he kept it alive as long as possible and there was something cruel in that and it's so interesting now he's got the choice here actually possibly for hector to you know continue this treatment get better and look at this side eye look look at this look at this is like peak evil gus scheming scheming gus of like no 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 this is exactly where i want him this is where i'm going to keep him to like finish the job wow perhaps we should Temper our expectations. Yeah, no, he's got Hector exactly where he wants him. The goal is never to get him better. Not fully. I guess this is this has worked out at least better perhaps than Gus could have foresaw. Oh, careful, buddy. Ah, descent in the ranks, eh? No, no, no. All right, let's walk out. Okay. You can't run up. Ah, of course he's learning. Beautiful. Right, we're behind schedule then. What are we like? Like four, maybe five months in, something like that. Right, he's just going by Saul now. Hey, safer that way, right? Needs an alias. Right, is he in inspecting the uh, loss of hair? Interesting. Do you remember that episode? I don't know when it was. Uh, last season, I think, maybe not, where he was in the car and he noticed he was he was losing some hair. And how at the time I talked about how that is tied to a lot of insecurity in a lot of men, right? It shouldn't be. And, you know, again, so this is one of these things that society doesn't do a great job of dealing with. But it's interesting that we're getting that again now. And considering what I've been talking about this episode previously already, and how we have these things tied to gender, tied to being raised as a man, being a man in society, and where you find typically your value, or where you're supposed to find your value, where you're taught to find your value. Obviously, we've had the profession and the hierarchy of that, money, how much you earn, you know, being the breadwinner, right, as well, and then your full head of hair. All of these things and the loss or the lack of them and how that affects men, can affect men, typically affects men, and how we're kind of seeing them in this episode just hitting Jimmy. Again, 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 another, another, another. Yeah, interesting. It's not uh, by accident that we're being shown again this in this episode. And uh, the way that this is all working away at Jimmy's psyche, uh, you know, his mental state and his self-worth. Officer? <laughs> mm. The drug dealer who got sprung today, he was using a drop phone that you sold him. Huh. <sighs> what my customers do with the phones after they leave my possession, that's their business. Interesting. It's almost Waltesque, isn't it, of the meth. And I don't think the way that, you know, Walter really appreciated once he'd made the stuff, where it went and what it did. And Saul here exhibiting the exact same kind of mindset. See, I got a permit and I'm collecting sales tax and this is a illegal. Right. I was going to ask, like, because there's nothing illegal about what he's doing. But it's interesting how we've had so far in this episode this uh, inferiority that we keep getting, you know, uh, Jimmy hit with. And now this is kind of the first person that it's not a good person to take it out on. <laughs> But coming against him and, and the person that he can, he can just kind of let it out on, right? There's no one else here. He can act how he wants to act. And he's, and he's hitting back. Buddy, yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, God. No! He's a 
up. Oh man. <laughs> no. Yeah, there it is. You were in plain clothes. He had no idea you were a police officer. Oh, he knew all right. No, he didn't. Picked him up three years ago. Okay, maybe he did. Really? Yeah. Pickpocketing. <laughs> that sounds right, yeah. <laughs> he had a bow to grind. Damn, not ideal. Yeah, I don't think these guys are doing very well, are they? Especially this guy. Yeah, morale is low. Always a beer bottle, always a drink, eh? Glad that you can join me for my happy hour. Doesn't seem very happy. It doesn't look so happy to yeah. me. <laughs> Today you'll feel better after Mittag Schläfchen. Oh, say that again? Schläfchen me, mate. Nap time. Beautiful. Schläfchen me up, dude. I'll say Mittag Schläfchen. Mittag Schläfchen. Mittag Schläfchen. Mittag Schläfchen. Good, good, Michael. Well, it's pronounced Tyler, but whatever. Schläfchen is for alte Säcke wie euch. It's in Deutsch. Go on, please tell me you understood that. It's bescheuert. He said, you sound like a real crowd. Mike's gonna be like, no, he didn't. How do you say bulls? <laughs> Emmentrout in German, it comes from two words. Oh, of course he's called Emmentrout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. World plus strength. I did assume his family was German, maybe. I'm happy to explain the delay to Mr. Frame. Bless you, mate. What would happen if we sent Kai back to Germany? <laughs> Risky. I was thinking about this, you know, after last episode, because I was like, you can't. That guy, there's no way he stays quiet. I ran it through my head and I was like, Ugh. Gus kills him. Like, you can't let a guy like that. I, I was questioning actually whether any of these are going to get out of this alive. I, I do feel like to maintain the secrecy, I just feel like a personal, I just don't think any of them are getting out of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, this is, this is, this is the, the jewel, the heart of the secret at the center of what Gus makes his organization. And I just, yeah, I, pff, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm kind of on the side of, of he's just going to kill them all. Maybe he's not told Mike yet. Maybe he won't tell Mike until it happens. But yeah. Not good. Yeah. My best demolition man. Oh right, okay. He's a Cosmo. Yeah, this is the thing as well. I was thinking about Kai, and I was like, "There's a reason he's cocky. There's a reason he's confident. The only reason you would keep someone like that in an operation as sensitive as this is because he's good at his job. Absolutely." They thought they were going to be here for eight months. They can see we are not even halfway done. Right. But you can't keep men locked away forever. Fresh air, change of scenery, and women. Is that where we're going? You understand? Yeah, yeah. It's funny, this episode's very tied to this idea of gender, right? And what men need, isn't it? I mean, we've just got that. They're more, that's less subtle, but I think everything else has been very subtle, very under the surface, and, and, and the way that it's been shaping Jimmy and how it's kind of sh still, still shaping Jimmy, how it's kind of digging out the roots of his relationship with Kim, and he's self-sabotaging right now because of that. I think you can trace the roots of it. I mean, you know, obviously there's other factors to it, but I think you can trace the roots of it deeply to his gender and the way that it's taught him to be, and the way that that is now kind of coming into conflict with the things he has in his life. Rest and relaxation. Yeah, I mean, if they're gonna be here for longer anyway, give him a break, right? Two and a half years. Ooh. Come on now, they'll come down. Oh, suit and booted, buddy. I'm a bounce. <coughs> they said I can go. <laughs> Pulled over for a broken tail light. Well, I just won't drive with a broken tail light. Mm. Sooner or later, they're gonna catch up with you. You didn't get DB Cooper. Very interesting conversation, it. I, I think I can fix it. I feel like you gotta draft Kim in. I'm a magic man. <laughs> Uh, we haven't seen him and Kim talk since that car drive back. I think he's gonna wait around a month for me to be reinstated. A month? A month left? Wow, it's been nine months. Jeez, man. Oh, I was well off on my guess, wasn't I? God, nine months and the guys down below in the lab, they're not even halfway done. That's insane, man. That's intense. But also, sorry, a month? A month until Jimmy can practice again? That's why, well, I suppose it makes sense, right? He was looking for an office at the beginning of the episode. On the street? Kim, I... Yeah, he's being honest with her. Interesting. Hey, do you know what, though? What did I say last episode? We're gonna get a time skip. Here we are. The arresting officer, he has a DUI. We get him smelling like a distillery. Ugh. We'll lose his cool in front of the judge, a little stumble in there. I wonder if she'll do this for him and then they'll be done. Yeah, that's dodgy, man. <sighs> Uh, what's the word, Kim? Can you give me case material for Penal Code 3422? She should thought something else. I'm not tearing down a cop. Mm. I mean, it's interesting the way that obviously they're, they're, you know, drifting apart, but also the motivations that we've seen and the shifting motivations and the way that also motivation-wise they're drifting apart because we've been seeing the last few episodes, Kim is going this place of like do-gooder. It's like taking cases, helping people. She wants to help people. Jimmy going the opposite way, breaking the law, doing doing things, or at least doing things iffy at the moment, right? And now, you know, the, the, the different ways that we're seeing them go about this task. We had Jimmy be 
being like, okay, we've got to tear him down. We've got to get him smelling like a distillery. We're going to, you know, make him angry. We're going to, that's how we're going to do it. And then Kim is like, no, 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 buy the book. We're going to do this good. We're going to do this the right way. If we can do it at all. And I think even in that subtle kind of conversation and, and just the ways, the different ways that they want to go about this shows you so much about where they're at right now. And again, how far they've kind of drifted from each other. Thanks, and how Jimmy Kim. is thankful. This right I now. really appreciate it. But I don't think he quite realizes okay. what he just asked her to, yeah, what he just asked her to do. And I think she's just more disappointed in what he told her about the drop phones than she's letting on right now. And um, tell me if there's anything I can do. Yep. Yeah, this relationship's over, man. Abiola, can you just, thank you. Mm, there it is. I mean, if it's not officially over by the end of this episode or whatever, it's over. I can, you can see it's already, it's done. Hope that wasn't a bribe. That would be one sad bribe. <laughs> it's battery on a PO. He has a prior. Yeah, it's so funny how this case has been arranged to, it's like, it's, it's, it's a slam dunk for this lady here, right? All of these little facts of the case. It's a slam dunk, it's easy, do you know what I mean? And it's funny how I do feel like, I mean, we know that Huel isn't in jail for the next two years, right? I feel like. It's funny how, I, I think this is going the way of like, Kim is gonna get him off. And actually how much it demonstrates how proficient she has become. She's almost like you say, she's almost, you know, the image of Chuck that we got at the beginning of last episode, the flashback, and how he was so impressive. And actually she's close Closing the gap to, you know, this is Kim, this is Chuck, to, to Chuck. And it's it's really interesting how we're getting actually this, like I say, this distance between Jimmy and her. And as she's moving away from him, she's getting closer more so to Chuck and how Chuck was. And I think what we saw in the scene before this of, you know, like I said, the different ways they went about the case and the way that Jimmy was like compromising. And I think the way that Kim was looking at him was, was more reminiscent of what the way that Chuck used to look at him, would look at him of, I disapprove of that. You're cutting corners to try and get what you want. And I think Kim is more by the letter of the law now than she ever was actually and I think because she's or, or not so much that but she, I think the, the distance that she's getting from Jimmy means that she's treating him from a harder perspective than she used to right she used to be soft on him in the way that she was more empathetic and I think now the place that they're at that's not there anymore and actually what the result is is that she is like I say treating him a little bit more coldly than she would have and how I don't think she would be as cruel as Chuck but she is kind of embodying his mindset in regard to Jimmy, which is really sad. And, and sorry, yeah, my, my original point is that I think she's going to win this. And professionally, that's really impressive considering the fact that I think, like I say, it's a slam dunk for this lady. You had five other cases where civilians were accused of physical force against police officers and not once were the defendants given anything close to this kind of jail time. Mm. He headbutted a police officer. Five months. Wow. State v. Carp. Five months. Were they white? No Should... priors. Brezovich broke a cop's nose. Right. This is unequal justice. In this case, he was hit with a bag of sandwiches. Oh, is there any sandwiches in there? Right. <laughs> Sorry, the bag looked heavier. There is no negotiation here, Kim. And honestly- mm. It's interesting now, that, that look on Kim's face. And I think it's personal for Kim now, but not in, not, not in a truly personal way, but personal in the sense that this lady's coming against her professionally. And I think that's very personal to Kim. I think, I think she's driven by almost her need to, to win cases, which I think, it, again, is reminiscent of Chuck, right? It's like, how dare you come against me? How dare you think that I'm wrong? And her only witness is a scumbag, disbarred lawyer. <sighs> oh. Go on, Kim, what you got? You don't know the whole story. I'd rather talk to you in person. Are you at home? Okay. All right, Mr. Babineau. Yeah, she's taking it on herself now. There's no way around it. You'll back me up, right? <sighs> Good. I don't know that he will. The only way we can legitimately do this, well, it's the only way. You're gonna tell him to stay put? Yeah, sure. Oh God, dude, if you go against her on this. You do your thing, I'll do mine. I'll do mine, right. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Now she's questioning on, the, on those kinds of things. She wouldn't before. She just let it slide. She'd, she'd kind of know and sense, but she'd just let it go. Now she's not. If he goes against her on this, she is gonna take that very badly. I'm very nervous watching Kim in a car nowadays. I'll be honest with you. Mate, pay attention to the road though. No, no. Okay. We're good. She's gonna follow him. Gonna follow Jimmy. Title of the episode, something stupid. So quickly to, sorry, interrupt the video. I know we're pretty much finished, but um, I've been thinking about this as I've been editing through and wild theory time, because as I was watching this and knowing obviously how it ended, the opposition, the lady who has the slam dunk against Huel, kind of dug at Kim a little personally, right? And it, and it obviously, you know, spiraled into Kim I think starting, I don't know, some some plan that's uh, maybe a little bit more uh, Jimmy-esque, right? A little bit more kind of 
below the belt, not quite moral or ethical or maybe going outside the bounds of her job as a lawyer, something. Anyway, I don't know. This got me to thinking about, because I obviously see this episode is kind of all about, you know, the like I said, the separation of Jimmy and Kim. And it got me thinking about, again, this this future we're getting to where Kim, we know, doesn't exist, at least to, at least to our knowledge. Maybe she does and she's just not in Breaking Bad, right? Like, she, you, you just don't see her, perhaps. But I was thinking about, like, what, what would be the most interesting thing? And I think the, the, the two most obvious, almost, things are things that I've kind of mentioned before. Either she dies or they just split up, right? And I and I do think they're obvious, but also the splitting up thing. I think that the dying is very, almost cliche. It's too predictable. It's almost too dramatic. Do you know what I mean? It's like, ah, oh, yes, I kind of saw that coming. Do you know what I mean? It, I, I feel like at this point, it's lost a little bit of the shock factor for me. If that did happen, it would still be heartrending, whatever. But, you know, and Chuck's already died. And I do feel like, do you know what I mean? If you just keep killing off all the people that he knows and loves, then I don't know, there's something a little bit stale about that idea to me. The breakup thing, it's just a bit boring, isn't it? Like, you can still have that happen, but I think you, yeah. at least my mind, I'm like, you want to make that happen in the most interesting way possible. And now I'm seeing, you know, Jimmy possibly rope her into something that she, against a better nature, is being kind of roped into by him. And at face value, she said no to him. She was like, no, I'm not doing it that way. I'm going to do it my way. What if she gets caught in some elaborate scheme of his and she goes down for it? And because of Jimmy, she goes to jail. Or she loses what she's kind of gained with Schweiker and Coakley, and she loses her livelihood, or, or gets disbarred, or something. Because that would be kind of damning. And it would also turn her against him so much. And actually, sorry, I, what was it? I, I, yeah, I, I, there was a line that I've just kind of listened to as I was editing that she says, oh no, no, sorry, a line that I, <laughs> a line that I listened to that I said was that she's, she's, cl- she's kind of closing in a little bit more on Chuck. And I was like, how beautifully horrible would it be if the show got her in a place where she kind of echoed Chuck? For Jimmy. Do you know what I mean? Because you can kind of see that now. You can kind of see her kind of taking on, like I say, the, the role of Chuck in a certain way. Like I, I said, I don't think she's going to be quite as cruel as Chuck, but I'm like, what if they make her as cruel as Chuck? And I'm like, and then that's what got me on this path almost of like, what would make her as cruel as Chuck to Jimmy? And it would be to me, I, I'm like, well, what if they take away her her career, which, which we know is her life? It's kind of the same thing at this point. We know that characteristically, she's not got much more in her life than her career. Not in a sad way, but that's just who she is. And especially, I don't know if they would like actually put her in prison. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if she'd actually get arrested for it, but it would be kind of heartrendingly tragic for that to happen. And especially if like Jimmy, even as a lawyer, can't do anything about it. Or she's like, I don't want anything to do with you. You got me here, leave me alone. And I can just see, like I say, something along the lines of, if that happens, her getting to a place where she's like, Chuck was right about you. And how, oh, how heartbreaking would that be? And then I can also, that fits with what I know about Jimmy and where he gets to his soul and and I could see it get to a place of him almost consigning himself he's like this is all I deserve I shouldn't be striving for more because I don't deserve it the soul is who I am that's who I am at the core I've proven that by what I I did to Kim unwillingly though it might have been and I can just see it being almost like a a self-consigned what's the word ah my brain's gone blank what Yoda did in episode three, he went to Dagobah. What's the word? Not a retreat. <laughs> I can't think of the word. But but uh, whatever, for, for lack of a better word, like self-consigned, like a punishment. He's, he's his own punishment, right? And at least like I started to think about this and I was like, that would be, I kind of want that to happen because that would like wreck me. Like that would be so heartrending and so horrible to watch Kim get to this place where she is like parroting and believes and is on Chuck's side and he's saying the same things as Chuck back at him. It would be so cruel. It would be so horrible. It would be so beautiful beautiful if they could like write because I have faith in these writers as well I know they could write that realistically and get them to a place I already see kind of the pieces falling into place for that to happen anyway so like I said I don't know if she's gonna get arrested but maybe she can get disbarred I, I, mm, I could see that. And then her lashing out at, at Jimmy. And then, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Wild theory. I don't know if, if that's going to happen or, or what, but but I wanted to put it. I was going to put like a paragraph as a comment, but yeah, it kind of grew into a whole theory. So I was like, okay, let's just get it in the video. And then it's there and then I can just move on. Anyway, back to the video. Is she going to do something? Okay. Jimmy, whatever you're doing, don't. Uh-huh. I have a better way. Really? Okay. Ah, okay, cool, no idea. 
Awesome. Something stupid. Yeah, what an interesting episode. This through line of, I think, gender and what it means to be a man and how that can twist you. It doesn't have to, obviously, and, and a lot of men can get past that, do get past that, grow out of that, learn better practices, you know, learn to see themselves and judge themselves a different way and, and find security in themselves despite what I've been talking about, right? Absolutely. But I do think a lot of people don't and, and can't and it can twist people like maybe it's like, like it's twisting Jimmy. Absolutely. Personally, there's a lot else going on and I think the way that his brother has treated him and this you know his complex of insecurity that he's got through that as well but at the same time I do think that insecurity has been exacerbated by Chuck's behavior towards him unfortunately he took that into I think his relationship or at least it, it rooted itself in this the feelings that he has for Kim all the way back like we saw in the in the flashback last episode all the way back then which I think is slowly tearing at the roots of their relationship and I think we're seeing you know that they are, they're still together but I, I at least see and, and feel as if the relationship's kind of done. Even now, even if it persists for a little bit longer. We'll, we'll see. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they find their way back. I, I kind of hope they do. It was a very sad episode, I think, for them and their relationship, especially the way it started. But um, yeah, we'll end it there. Thank you so, so much for watching. That was Better Call Saul. If you're not subscribed, please do consider doing that down below. I've got uh, some links in the description if you fancy getting early access on all my videos. Thank you to those who do support me. Genuinely, thank you. Try this video right here to keep the hype train going but other than that that's it from me this week be good see you soon